What's up guys? Today I'm responding to Jeffrey Verdi Schofield's six month shredded transformation. As many of you may know by now, we both went through the same process. I was done a month before him, and then he came out with this video detailing all of his experiences getting down to single digit body fat. And although he did not compete in natural bodybuilding, he certainly had the conditioning. And what I find fascinating is that every symptom he described, I can relate to perfectly. So the goal of this video is to steer you away from getting shredded. Unless you really want to step on stage and you want to try it once just to see what you're made of and you've been lifting for five, 10 years, you got the muscle and you're willing to suffer. You're willing to go through absolute hell. Maybe you're in the industry. It's really not worth it, which will become very evident as I go through these points one by one. So it's just funny how two elite naturals who have this as their job, who live in the gym, who document everything, who have perfect lifestyles, perfect diets, perfect everything, struggle to this extent. What makes you think you're the exception? I'm telling you right now, being shredded is a nightmare. You will hate your entire existence. Your life will be miserable. Your mental health will be in the gutter. You'll be hungry, tired, weak. Other than you looking your absolute best, I can promise that you're feeling your worst. Your friends, family, supporters will be concerned for you. Heck, you'll be concerned for yourself because everything is shutting down. So before I spoil too much information, let's just dive into Jeffrey's experiences and see what we can relate to because there's a lot to cover. And of course, let me know if you wanna see more response videos like this pertain to other important topics. So over the course of about six months, I lost about 15 kilos or roughly 30 to 35 pounds. And I was not super fat at the start. I was probably low 20% in body fat. So imagine Jeff was not fat. He was at the minimum of bear mode, not max style. Like he could have bulked for even more if he chose to. So total of 30 pounds lost. He did in a six month time frame. So although it was a giga cut in a sense, he did it properly with the amount of weight loss. And that's why he retained so much mass at the end. But I just want you to realize that you can look somewhat lean and still have to lose 30 pounds. And for me, I lost 50 pounds. I was around 23, 25% body fat and got down to like seven. So if you don't even look as lean as Jeff and you're like, oh, I'm just gonna lose 20 pounds of fat and I'll be shredded, chances are you're probably gonna lose double or more. And that was certainly the case for me. And I probably finished around eight or nine percent somewhere around there i would say you're being a little bit too humble there jeff in my opinion you are at least seven percent body fat potentially lower the problem is that you're filming with what i believe is a cell phone if you use a proper camera with good dynamic range bro you would see even more definition in fact i would say you got more shredded than me. You could have done really well in natural bodybuilding. Anyone who would have shown up on stage, you would have crushed them in terms of shreddedness. And I think that's also why your side effects got so bad towards the end because you really pushed it to a psychotic level. So please upgrade your camera. The viewers are gonna love it and you're gonna see new definition because obviously there's a mirror, but I would assume that most of your physique analysis is done through your computer screen. So this is not just a cut that potentiates a bulk. There is really nothing to be gained here in terms of long-term progress in the gym. This was just something that I did for the experience. That's a fact. You're making no gains from this experience. There's no point. And that's why I need to continue discouraging you guys from getting shredded. You're losing out on what could be half a year of bulking progress. And in my case, I never actually plateaued when I was bare mode. The gains kept coming. PRs every single week. I was at the peak of my strength. I just hit a 507 squat. In my opinion, could have easily done five and a half plates had I grinded a couple more months and just put on some weight. So the fact that we both went through this, we didn't make any gains, not an ounce of gains. And for those who said, oh, you look better. Well, because you're just revealing what you already built during the bulk. So at best, you're maintaining muscle mass, but even then you're going to lose some size. And this is what research is starting to show. Basically in every study ever done on natural bodybuilders, 100% of them lose muscle. So you're losing muscle, trying to retain what you built during that bulk. And it's a wasted six months of progress, period. There's no advantage for those who are gonna say, oh, well, 
You can get down to single digit and then have a, a lower body fat set point and slowly bulk your way back up. Good luck. You're going to rebound just like every single one of us. You know, I look at the competitions, just check a month or two later. Look at the guys who are 6% body fat, the most shredded. They're all 12% body fat or more. Nobody stays that shredded when they're lifetime natties. Even if you try to do a reverse diet, you're still going to gain over 10 pounds in a short amount of time. So it's what it is. Chances are where you were, maybe in the middle of your cut, you'll get back to that body fat. But then you're a little bit weaker and you got to rebuild some of that strength. So the point is, you're not getting anything from this other than satisfying your ego and looking good temporarily. You can take some nice pics, some photo shoots. It's good for social media, you know, especially if you store all your photos. But for long-term progress, don't recommend it. The goal was stage level elite natural bodybuilding condition. I'm not sure if I entirely got there. I got pretty damn close. Yeah, you definitely got there, Jeff. And also, you're pale like me. You didn't even get the spray tan on. And you never tried oiling up. That's a part of the process. Just saying, if you would have had the goon lighting, which your gym is pretty good for that, plus the camera, plus the tan, plus a little bit of oil. Oh, and maybe even taking some L-citrulline to further make those veins pop out. Would have been game over. Like, you probably have the best natty physique right now in YouTube fitness, straight up. My arms were completely shredded. You could see all the fibers in the arm, not just the overall definition, not just some vascularity, but the actual fibers of the biceps. Like, you know, when you're decently lean, you got that bicep vein right in the middle. It looks good when you're pumping up. Well, you actually have more veins right underneath that point, and they're gonna run up vertically, which is pretty fucking awesome. And when you're curling, especially as you get closer to failure, you can see like an alien-like motion, like whoosh, the fibers, as if you're bouncing your pecs, they're radiating. You got lines going across your arms. It's definitely freaky. And same thing for the delts. You can see every individual fiber. You know, it's not so simple as just saying this front side rear, like there's a lot of definition. Triceps, again, also feathered. Quads are feathered. Back at a Christmas tree. I had a full six pack for the first time in my life. Veins in the middle of my abs and lower abs. I love that shot on the overhead tricep extension. You can see the serratus and obliques just popping out. And I have a, a similar kind of top. So it, it reminds me of how I looked. You know, you're just doing your extensions. It's crazy. And <laughs> when you post that as B-roll, you'll see most viewed. It's when you're in that little position right there. So just had to throw that in. You know, I got, I got pretty damn lean. Six weeks out, I went through the same thing. We both got shredded a little bit too soon. We, we had to stop the cut earlier. And that's why we further prolong being in this state. We actually were maintaining it to a certain extent. Like when you got veins in your lower abs, you're gonna have two of them coming out like this. You should probably stop because if you push it past that point, well, first of all, it's already difficult to maintain that level of shreddedness, but then going beyond is where the side effects just get out of control. I had the death face. It sort of filled out now a little bit, thankfully. Not gonna lie, that's one of the scariest death faces I've ever seen. Your cheeks are so hollow. There's literally no fat. And that's five weeks out, so it got even worse. By the end, bro, you legit look like a caveman. And I can relate on that. I genetically store a lot of fat in the face, but towards the end, you can see these hollow lines. I look like handsome Squidward or something. And you change ethnicities, especially if you do the tan. But the last month to month and a half, people were giving me weird looks. My wife started bringing me food. She was kind of concerned for me. It was rough the last month or so. Yeah, when you're the most shredded guy in the gym, everyone's staring at you. You're getting complimented. You're getting stared at in the mirrors. And people leave you alone as well. When you're filming, they don't want to go near you. They know that you're a serious guy. So that that's cool, I guess. But if you don't like the attention, I suppose it's negative. The pinnacle of natural bodybuilding conditioning, it's not the abs, it's the glutes. It's having fully shredded and striated glutes. I didn't quite th get there. I got pretty close. I thought about showing a picture and I will show a picture, even though my channel is a little bit more mainstream. I literally worked my ass off for this and um, you know, it gives you some perspective. Hopefully I don't get banned on YouTube for this. And this was about two weeks out. So I lost another four or five pounds from this level of conditioning. You know what, it's funny, Jeff, because I did the same thing, but unlike you, I didn't have the balls to post my glutes, but after you show yours, <laughs> it, I'm gonna show mine as well. Because let's keep it real, anyone who gets a single digit body fat, because you're aware of the standards, you all took a pick of your ass, come on. But of course you don't wanna get banned or have the algorithm not recommend your stuff anymore. So I'm just gonna black out the center of my ass, but you can see the outline. And it looks like very square, 
when you're that lean. And by the way, when you're doing a back double bicep pose, you're supposed to flex your glutes as well, which uh, I didn't realize until the end, but I digress. Yeah, like Jeff didn't get to the pinnacle of shredness, neither did I. We could have technically done it for another month and then it would have been nothing left to lose, like Nunez level, but we were very close to it. So glute striations is the ultimate level. And in my opinion, that's kind of a shame because back in the silver and golden age, that was not even a thing. Guys didn't even have shredded glutes. They were a little bit fluffier like on the maybe 9% body fat tops. So I think that would be a much better standard for natural bodybuilding. But what I learned from Dr. Mike is that apparently we can get even more shredded because we don't have drugs that cause us to retain water. So the best natural bodybuilders are gonna look more shredded than the best enhanced bodybuilders. It's just much harder to get there and you feel worse. I actually felt pretty okay in this condition. From there, things did not go well. Yeah, when you first hit the shredded stage, you're somewhat okay. But every week that passes by, it's like your battery is draining quick. And uh, Jeff's gonna cover that now, all the bad. All right, so now let's talk about the positives and the negatives. Now, there were a lot more negatives, so we'll start with those. I had trouble sitting. It started where I would, you know, my butt would start to hurt. I could feel my hip bones on my chair after like an hour. And over the last month or so, it got to the point where I couldn't sit down for more than about a minute or two. I had to work from bed. I had to lie in bed and work from there on my computer because I couldn't sit down in a chair. It's interesting you say that, Jeff, because although I also went through this lack of cushioning effect, it was the opposite in the sense that I could not lie down in bed properly because I felt like my ribs were being crushed. So my serratus got really shredded and just me pressing against a soft bed was terrible. I had to stack multiple pillows just to feel somewhat okay. But if you would move just a little bit, you feel immense pain. And actually I remember my little brother would try to hug me and like he's a child, bro. And it would hurt. Oh, and even when you wear your lifting belt, it hurts. You get bruises and you can't keep it on the entire workout. You have to take it off in between sets or in general, after that one set is complete, you're in pain for a couple of minutes. So that's what I felt in regards to that. Just a whole midsection but not the glutes specifically. I also had disrupted sleep for the last three to four weeks where I would wake up at four or 5 a.m. I had been waking up to go to the bathroom for the past like three or four months, but from there I just couldn't go back to sleep. Yeah, same here. And actually, because you have no fat, I feel like it presses more on the bladder area. So you wake up in the middle of the night to go piss and then it's hard to go back to bed. So you end up sitting there for an hour or two and, um, it's true that you will never get your eight hours of sleep, even if you're exhausted. And the more you stay shredded, the worse the insomnia becomes. It's pretty much unavoidable to the point where, and some of you may not believe me for this, but I swore on my life, this is the truth. On the day of my bodybuilding competition, I only slept two hours. Yes, not four, not five, two. And the day before that, it might've been around four hours. So. Obviously there's some stress involved with that too. The anxiety of like, you know, you're, you're envisioning the whole process. You're practicing the pose the night before, you know, it's very hard to fall asleep. It's hard to go to bed after waking up and you will find yourself waking up at very odd times. Like I am not a morning person, far from it. I like to sleep in, especially if I'm working out late at night and editing into the night or going to the gym when it's dark because that's the best time where people aren't busting your, your chops. You know, I'm a night owl, right? And despite that, I found myself waking up at absurdly early times, like times that construction workers are out there. And this is without getting a full eight hours. So you're in a constant state of sleep deprivation. I would sleep maybe four hours a night, sometimes three hours a night, five hours a night. And that's not like eight or nine hours in bed. No, it's like, that's all the sleep that I got for the last two or three weeks. I, didn't, I don't think I had a single day over five hours. Not a single day over five hours, wow. I didn't have it that bad, but uh, there were certainly many days like that. My hips tightened up a lot, so I would go for my morning walk and I couldn't fully extend my femur behind me. So I'm sort of like limping along. Everything is just tightened up, locked up, probably just from the stress. And so I'm getting in, you know, 18,000, 19,000 limping steps a day an hour and a half in the gym still, trying to work lower body, trying to maintain, retain all the muscle I can, not eating very much food, not just burning the candle at both ends, just like taking the candle, putting it on the ground and just 
stomping the shit out of it. That's basically how it felt. Yeah, same here. In fact, walking was one of the most difficult activities in the world. If you were to give me a choice, Larson press 225 for reps or go for a 30 minute walk, I'm choosing the benching because at least then I can relax those hips and I don't have to move my weak ass legs. And legs specifically is the worst part of all this because yeah, you're limping like a zombie. Every step you take, it's as if you're gonna fall flat on your face and die. I'm not over exaggerating when I say that. Like, you know how old people will grab onto things, you know, or they have their cane or whatever. You find yourself doing that in your own home or when you go outside, like you're just, you're reaching for things because you're afraid of falling. So the shredded limp is definitely true and uh, props to you for even getting up to around 18,000 steps a day because I didn't have the energy to do so. I tried, you know, I was doing 60 minute walks then eventually went down to 45, 30, then 20 and then towards the very end, I just stopped completely because walking took so much out of me or like I like to go for walks around the park. I couldn't even do one lap. You know, my work capacity, my endurance was basically inexistent. I also got lazy. You can tell because I've been a lot less productive and you just don't have the energy to do anything. Yeah, that's the best way to put it. You don't have energy to do anything. You become so lazy as if you're a teenager with no life responsibilities and you're taking easy classes such that it doesn't even feel like you're in school. You're not making a lot of videos because you can't. Or even if you tried to, they end up being rather negative and incoherent. Your brain just doesn't function correctly and your subscribers can see and hear it. So it's very obvious and in my case, I was only posting Q and A's once a week because that's all I was realistically able to do. And that one Q and A would wipe me out for the day. So if you have a normal job, I can't imagine how hard this would be. You just train and that's the energy you have. And then long-term clients and, and custom training plans that would have to take priority because that's what I'm actually getting paid to do. Yeah. In my case, I had to drop clients because I didn't even have the energy to do that. I felt like I was doing them a disservice by working one-on-one. -on -one. I had to prioritize myself first. Mental energy is certainly a finite resource when you're very deep into a cut. Yeah. You become extremely introverted and that doesn't help when this job is already kind of that. You don't want to talk to anybody. And what's really annoying is when people text you, you're like, leave me the f alone. Like, you know, when older people are sick and they just lash out at you for no reason, they just got a chip on their shoulder or you're trying to be nice to them, but they still take it bad. That's kind of how you are. You just don't want to be around anyone. Just feel miserable in your own shell. Like you almost developed that doomer personality. It's very strange, but the last thing you want to do is socialize. And when you're around other people, say in a group setting, you're just there silent. You're not going to say a goddamn word. Like even with me, bro, you, you saw me collab with Dr. Mike and Johnny Shreve, both great guys. And I had a good time there, but you can see I wasn't really there. I was a mute and normally that wouldn't be me. You gravitate towards what is easy. So, you know, Alex Leonidas, he actually did a cut about a month before me. So I was sort of seeing what I would have to go through before I actually went through it. And he talked about how he would be playing RuneScape. And yeah, like you just gravitate towards easy stuff, towards like enjoyable, pleasurable stuff because you don't have energy to do difficult, productive things. Exactly. And it's not just that you don't have energy and that it's pleasurable, easy to do, but also because it speeds up the process and it gets your mind away from the misery of being shredded. So it's a coping mechanism in a sense. And the gaming especially helps with hunger because you're hungry 24 seven. And if it's five o'clock, you only have 300 calories left for the day. And you know that you're not sleeping that night. Well, you got uh, many more hours of torture. So how do you curb the hunger when you're not making any videos or being productive? Well, you play RuneScape, you play Diablo, you play World of Warcraft, you play lengthy MMORPGs that, you know, you can get absorbed in that fake fantasy world. And in my case, you know, I restarted on OSRS and I had a total skill level, maybe 1400. I got up to 1750 in like a month and a half, not even. And I completed all the quests up until uh, Monkey Madness 2. So the 2016 era, even AFK, cause that's very easy to do. You find yourself watching uh, lengthy live streams, like anything that's long, where you can just stay focused and not do anything, that's what you want to do. Caffeine, it was used and probably abused. I don't know a milligram amount per day, but certainly when you are very, very hungry and you are trying to suppress your appetite, 
you find that your hand, you know, reaches for another cup and another cup and another cup just because that's something you're relying on to suppress your appetite and just to to try to keep the hunger at bay, which doesn't happen, by the way. Oh, yeah, caffeine's a big one. So I normally have two mugs worth, which equates to four cups of coffee on the percolated machine every morning. So two of these. When I was single digit body fat, I was starting off my morning with a pot a day, which on the little measurement thing is either 10 or 12 cups of coffee. So you're drinking a bunch of it. And that's just the beginning. Then we have to include the diet Pepsi or diet Coke or diet anything that you're drinking, which also contains caffeine. And you're probably going to have about four liters of that a day. You know, you're not even going to want to drink water. It's either coffee or diet soda, which contains caffeine. And obviously if it's a certain time, if it's late, you don't want to drink that, but that's why you also have the caffeine free diet soda, but you're definitely gonna be reliant on it. And uh, pre-workout in particular, by the way, check out my link in the description box, Transparent Labs, get 10% off using my cold Leonidas, as opposed to just having it once in a while when you feel tired. Well, in this case, you're always tired. So you find yourself taking scoops every single time and you end up going through it pretty quickly. And by the way, even when you do have all this caffeine, it doesn't actually help you like when you're eating normally. You know when you have that little kick, especially from an espresso, you never get the kick. It's just like to feel somewhat normal-ish, but you're never like over the top, like yeah, going crazy kind of thing. You don't have that energy, even when you try to abuse the stuff. You're literally hungry all the time. All the time. You wake up, you're hungry. First thing you think about is food. You go to the gym. Usually when you're working out, you're not hungry. But when you're that lean, you are. You're hungry when you're working out. You're hungry after the workout. When you eat your meal, your meal makes you hungrier. It's not like the food satiates you at all. If anything, your body is like, oh, we, we do have access to food. You've been deceiving us. We want more of that. You actually cannot wait for midnight to pass by so you can eat a snack. Satiation is impossible. In fact, even if you try to consume a little bit more, you're gonna employ less meal frequency, guess what? Your stomach is smaller, you end up getting rather bloated, and you have this like big gut that's popping out, but your throat feels the hunger. So you can't even eat more if you wanted to, because <laughs> internally, you just can't handle it. And imagine that, you're still hungry. Before the meal, after the meal, like you're just eating to get your macros. There's no enjoyment whatsoever. And that's also why your diet literally needs to be perfect because if it isn't, you're gonna be extra hungry. And in my case, I ended up having to incorporate foods that I normally would not eat. And it wasn't particularly enjoyable, but I had to go for the most satiating stuff. And again, I need to point out that as good as these foods were in terms of suppressing the appetite a little bit, it never really solved the problem. Under normal circumstances, you are never full. Nothing helps. It doesn't matter volume eating, anabolic diet, nothing. If you do the volume eating thing, which I did, I would have actually vegetables. But no matter how much volume of food you eat, that's not what your body wants. Your body wants energy. It wants carbohydrates. It wants fat. It wants calories, energy. And you're giving it something that it doesn't want. And so you'll feel like kind of bloated and full but still hungry. Yeah, like even if you can trick your body temporarily by just stuffing a bunch of vegetables, and keep in mind, you're gonna be consuming an absurd amount, even the fruits, like you can down 500 grams of strawberries easily, and you still won't necessarily be full, but even after doing something like that, an hour later, you're starving. So there's no tricks, there's no manipulation that could ever give you hope. <laughs> Strength went down, it was up for the first like five months, or maybe just stable, but yeah, the last month or so, you're just, you know, kind of unmotivated the train because usually it's like you see the numbers going up. Well, you see the numbers going down. You, you don't even want to write it in your, your training log. You're like, okay, well, weaker than last week, great. Weaker than last week is the best way to describe it. So when you're bulking, it's plus ones if you're doing something like double progression. Whereas when you're cutting, actually most of the time, you're going to be somewhat in a maintenance phase. Like in your first month or two, you experience a little dip in strength, but then it kind of stabilizes. But then as you get closer to being shredded, as opposed to just having some minus ones every couple of workouts, every couple of weeks, it literally becomes every single workout without exception. Like you know that if you got 10 reps last Monday, well, the following Monday, you're gonna get nine reps or even eight. It's guaranteed strength loss. It is 
regressive underload, if that makes any sense. Unavoidable, you're not gonna get stronger. The only exception is if you're doing a brand new exercise where there's still some neural adaptations. But as a whole, everything will lower to a tremendous extent. And in my case, that was the weakest I ever was in years. And I've disclosed what some of those numbers are in Dave McConey's podcast, so be sure to watch the full episode, but it's disgustingly low for my standards. I'm still embarrassed to talk about it this day because I'm just not used to being that weak. Granted, you regain the strength very quickly once you start eating normally again, but there's no way that you're making progress uh, as you died into a show, not happening. Libido went down noticeably. I mean, I was more interested in pizza than personal relationships, but I will note that everything still functioned you know food above all you have no interest in sex your drive is in the gutter and in my case when i finally got shredded i did not get a hard on for three weeks however the weirdest part of this all is that just like you jeff still function when it came down to business i was able but uh even that took a lot of psychological arousal you know because you're not thinking about it she could be dancing in front of you trying to make you feel a certain way doing anything right and it's like you're thinking about food your mind is not really there and you would honestly rather just cuddle or watch a show together like you're just tired you're not up for it you know so w when pressured but it's not you who's gonna be taking initiative you're okay but other than that food relaxation like just lay there and either be served or do something that doesn't require too much energy output on your end. I also didn't get injured, but I felt really beat up. Just, I think the lack of fat around the joints really does take a toll. You know, normally when you have fat around your knees, cause you notice that your knees do change in appearance. It's not just the quads that shred, that your knees look more knobbly and just you have veins in your knees and there's no fat around the joint. And normally the fat I think actually protects the joint. It's like nature's knee sleeve or something right where you're squatting down and like there's this nice padding around the joint that just disappears nature's knee sleeve that's a very interesting way to put it but i agree and in my experience I actually started getting right knee pain when i got shredded and i had a hard time loading my spine on barbell back squats in fact for the last two weeks i had to drop out that exercise completely because not only was it taking a lot out of me energy wise but it felt like I was gonna rip a disc out. Like my lower back and knees were starting to feel a little something. And it's not like I changed anything in my programming. It's not like I don't know how to do the exercises correctly. You know, you see me squat much heavier. You see me do so much more. Yet even using lighter loads, cause I lost so much strength, like the body aches more. And this is where natural bodybuilders and even enhanced users get their most injuries. It's right before a competition. They're training a little bit too hard. And they're doing exercise that maybe don't have the best stimulus fatigue ratio. So that becomes even more important. And in my case, I was primarily doing belt squats just to remedy that problem. And I had to do a lot of tempo stuff. Like you're definitely less resilient. And I think this is why some natties who stay on the leaner side, not only do they experience way less strength gains, but they also get a lot more overuse. And there's a reason why powerlifters like to be at a slightly heavier state, like that cushion around the joints, you know, the better recovery, it makes a difference. I'm normally a tank, I really don't get much joint pain at all, but when I'm single digit, I have to be very careful with my size selection, with my form, with my loading, all that, or else I start to feel a little bit off. My clothes definitely fit differently. I could tell like my clothes were just hanging off of me in a way that I didn't really like. Muscle is denser than fat, which means that you're gonna be just be taking up a lot less space. So when you remove that fat layer, which is actually taking up quite a bit of space, you're gonna have just clothes, that, especially hoodies or something that just, they feel like a tent. I had to wear a belt for basically all my pants, which is funny because when I was bulking, I was not even able to wear those same pants. I had to either wear shorts or loose joggers, you know? But when I was lean, they fit normally. And then when I got shredded, like there was so much space. It's like I was ballooned and then the t-shirts would just droop, you know, because you lose a lot of inches, you know, obviously you're trying to maintain some muscle, but you know, in my case, my arms went from 17 inches all the way to 15 and a half inches. If you don't think that's not going to have an impact on the way the arms are hugging the sleeves, then I don't know what to tell you because that's just the arms. Imagine the rest of the body. Like you're at least going to go 
one shirt size down. And by the very end, when in clothing, bro, you don't even look like you lift. Like when you see all those guys weighing in for the bodybuilding competition, it, it's not just that you're forced to like wear loose clothes and not mess up your tan, but you actually look small as fuck. And I have personal friends who showed up at the competition. When they saw me, they were like, what? They were shocked at how frail I looked. But then the moment I take the shirt off, they were blown away. Like, holy fuck, you look massive. But it's true. In clothing, you look like a DL. And then without, you look better than when you were bald. So generally, if someone's like, yeah, I put inches on my arms when I was shredding down, they're either a beginner or drugs. You know, when people are bulking into a show, they're gaining weight into a bodybuilding show, drugs every single time. So if you're natural, you're going to be losing weight. You're going to be losing size. And that's just how it is. Yeah, you can't do it. It's not possible. Jeff and I both lost measurements. You see it in every single real natural bodybuilder. There's no exceptions. <laughs> you guys talking about your elite genetics and whatever the f <laughs> No, you're a liar. That's all you're ever going to be. Thank <laughs> you. You're not recomping when getting down to single digit. And if you did it while going from 20% body fat to 15% body fat, great. So can I. If you did it while doing 15 to 12%, great. If you did it from 12 to 10, maybe. But going beyond that, you're going to go from 10% body fat to 6% and get bigger. <sighs> Who are you fooling? And like I said, I don't think guys understand just how small you really are when you're that shredded. It's simply an illusion of size. So when you guys are like, oh, look how massive this guy got when he was shredded. No, he lost size. And the only reason why you think he looks big is because he's standing close to a camera with good lighting and a pump. And it especially helps if he's shorter like me or if he's using like an 80 millimeter lens where the background is compressed. But in real life, you would never think that guy's massive. Just saying. As mentioned before, my wife got a little bit worried about me. I could tell I didn't want to have there be a situation where she had to support me, right? Or I had to rely on her or it was inconveniencing her or I had, or was like, you know, I was irritable or something. I felt that, but I was able to control it. You know, I would get some DM on Instagram or, or someone would be like, assess my body fat percentage now. And you know, I just wouldn't respond or something. Yeah, your partner, your family, even some of your strongest supporters will DM you. And you have no tolerance for stupidity or in general, you're kind of negative towards questions, especially if you answer them before. You just don't want to be helpful. You become a douchebag and everyone around you can see that you're suffering and they're trying to be there for you, but they're holding back the pain. Like I've been told personally that they want to cry at times, but they had to be strong for me because they knew that this meant a lot. But yeah, we're not wired like normal people. We're kind of crazy. There's always going to be a little bit of uh, body dysmorphia and you want to bring your best. You don't want to disappoint your audience either because, you know, we said we we're going to get shredded and we got to be men of our words. We can't back down. Like there was nothing that was going to stop me. Nothing. And although I was shredded a couple weeks in advance, like I should have competed in early April, not by the end of it. At least I didn't get to the point where I ended up in a hospital. And I will say... I genuinely felt like that towards the end. I felt like if I was gonna do one more month of this, I was gonna be in the intensive care or something. I felt like I was gonna die, guys. I, I'm not exaggerating when I say that. I was limping, I had a hard time speaking. My brain was just like so foggy. It felt worse than when I used to do those uh, long fasts, like five day fasts, dry fasting, all that. Like this was on a completely different level of torture. I think I was a month away from being in the hospital. And uh, people can see that you're feeling this way and they're checking up on you constantly. Like you're getting messages every day, but uh, you just gotta stay tough, you know? And it's especially hard on your mother. If you're close with your family, you can see they wanna ball up in front of you. So yeah, if you want everyone to go down with you and just lower the overall vibe, have fun getting shredded because uh, people will be concerned. I can promise you that. Now, I was able to not snap at anyone but man, that temptation is definitely there. And I could, I could feel that moodiness and irritability really start to rise, especially near the end. I also found that I was antisocial. Yeah, in my case, I actually was snapping out at people. Like I mentioned before, I was like an old person, you know? I just didn't want to hear it. I wanted to be left alone. And when people would annoy me, I would make it very clear that 
they got on my nerves. So there's no filters. You become even more raw. And I was even kind of like that in my Q&As. You can see the vibe. It was very negative. Terrible undertones. And you just become a, a repulsive human being when you're in that state. Because you're just taking out your frustrations on others. All right. So there were some good things. Uh, first, lots of compliments. Lots of like, bro, you look amazing. That kind of thing. Yep. You're actually going to get complimented in real life everywhere you go. But there's even more compliments on the internet. Like the positive things people were saying about me, I couldn't even keep up. My comment section was overwhelmed. Like, oh my God, look at all this hard work that finally paid off. I've been following you since 2016 and look at you now. You proved the haters wrong and you have the best natural physique ever. And so many like bombarded DMs, public comment section. You can even see it for yourself and your interactions triple. I was getting 9,000 likes a post for the ones that where I'm showing my shredded physique. You know, even the workouts where it's basic shit, those would get like over 6,000 likes instead of 2,500, 3,000. People are genuinely impressed. And every time you post, doesn't matter what it is, it could be the most dumb thing. Like they're on to check because they want to see just how much better you look. So it is true that you look like a freaking Super Saiyan, like an anime character. I got compared to Baki all the time, like Goku, you know? It's awesome. I appreciate it, but it's not really like something that gets me like, oh, people, people are saying nice things about me. Uh, if anything, it's the opposite. Like, I don't, I don't accept compliments very well. It's just how I am. Yeah, to each your own. I was accepting of it, but I didn't like the connotation that, wow, you got so much bigger. <laughs> when six months ago, I actually was bigger. I just like the fact that we need to do these extreme things to get recognition for already jacked physiques. Bear mode was a lot more impressive. That's a fact. There was nothing impressive except for the visual appearance of being single digit. When I was making PRs, when I was benching 405, when I was actually crushing it in those workout videos and I had the moon face and I was feeling strong and I was, you know, that's where I should get comments like you're a fucking beast. Not when I'm a month away from death. So that's what actually bothered me about that. It's that guys are saying you improved when you regress because you didn't fucking improve. And the same thing for you, Jeff. I know you know what I'm talking about. We both lost muscle and got weaker yeah, we're getting all these compliments saying, look how great of a job you did. The only great of a job that we did was having the discipline to continue through the pain. It's a testament to our willpower, but we should be getting compliments and feedback like that when we're fluffy. Also, and this might be relevant to anyone trying to make it in the fitness industry, definitely noticed more coaching inquiries, more, you know, it's better for business, more book sales, etc. which I found really funny because I didn't have the energy to coach more people, but I was getting way more inquiries. Yup, in fact, you probably noticed that every time you posted a physique update, you would see a spike in sales for your books on that exact day. And it was literally a one-to-one -one direct correlation. The better your physique looked, the more sales, the more coaching inquiries. Like we were barely posting on YouTube. If anything, the algorithm should have not favored us. Yet, we had more feedback than ever before and triple the engagement on our posts even the dumbest And then what happens is the moment you get out of that shredded state, you instantly see it go away, which is the sad part of all this. But you also recognize who your real supporters are. It goes back to exactly where you were before you got shredded. So all these new sales and new inquiries and all that, they're not your normal fan base. These are guys who found you randomly on Instagram. Maybe your stuff was recommended and you know they were interested for a short time, but then they see you back to your normal self, quote unquote, and they're like, oh, I'm not going to watch this guy anymore, even though you're actually more impressive now. It's actually kind of bipolar, if you ask me. So the demand was way up, despite me not really doing anything. And the supply that I could actually put out was way down. And so I actually had to turn people away. I had to be like, yeah, maybe message me in a month or so. Yeah, that's the problem. In a perfect world, we would just maintain being in the state. And like, I wish I could have stayed that shredded and just provided more content where I accumulate all kinds of B-roll looking my best, but I realistically have about eight weeks worth of B-roll footage. So unless you batch content for a year, where if you're lifetime natural, probably you wouldn't have survived long enough to be that shredded, you don't have enough content to keep up with the demand because your videos will do super well. It doesn't matter what you post, you know it's gonna do amazing because you look amazing. Every time you talk about a given subject, it could be an exercise where you normally don't even look that good. But because every detail of your muscle is being shown, people are all in for it. Like Q and A's, which are usually my worst performing segments. I was getting 80,000 views. Imagine if you have the energy 
plus the shredded clips for everything and you can post at a higher frequency. Well, now your, your, your channel is going to explode. Your social media is going to do amazing, but you just, as good as you look, you just can't produce. The only thing you could produce is new PRs in your video games, not real life building your business. So passively, like if you already have some products out, it's good. But if you're in the process of creating new products, writing a new book, making new videos, doing all kinds of posts, if you want your productivity to be normal, it's just not happening. The demand cannot keep up with the supply because you can't even keep up with yourself. I didn't even do a photo shoot. I know a lot of people were very interested in that. Um, so it might seem a little bit anticlimactic, but uh, that's just how I roll. I don't cause any climaxes. Ah, uh, Jeff, you should have done it. If you get a modern photographer, like they have the best cameras available now, the megapixel, the dynamic range, the perfect lighting, like these pictures and videos do not do you justice. Like you have one of the best physiques I've ever seen. It's crazy how shredded and built you were, you know? So I think you should have spent that 500 or whatever else it was and just had something to treasure for the long term. You could have shared it to your family, your viewers, for yourself. Even if you don't even post it, when you look at those pictures, you're like, wow. You know, you could even use it for your website, you know, new book covers, etc. So for next time, I would highly recommend it. And get that new camera, man. I'm telling you right now, this is gonna level up your channel and you're gonna feel even better about your physique because you mentioned that you were starting to develop some body dysmorphia as a result of gaining some weight, right? Well, if you properly showcase what you already have, which is a crazy impressive level, then uh, I think you'll feel even better posting those fluffier clips. Also, I have learned a lot about the training process, about fatigue management. That's a huge point. When you're single digit, you understand your recovery on a level that was never that apparent before. And although Jeff and I are not gonna recommend that you get down to this level just to experience that, it's a fact that you're very sensitive with certain things and chances are if you can't handle it when you're shredded, maybe it's sort of a sign that you shouldn't be doing that when you're bulking, even though your recovery is improved. Like it, it tells you something about your anthropometry, your muscular weaknesses, stimulus to fatigue, how much volume you may or may not require. Like there's a lot, you know, and in my case, you saw me do the two sets approach all the way down, right? And I was able to handle it while going to extreme muscular failure. So what that taught me is this whole idea that failure training will kill your recovery is kind of overrated, especially when you keep your volume low enough. So that's how I've been training in a bulking phase and it's even better. So fatigue management specifically, like you dial that in. Alberto Nunez said that it makes your physique more transparent and it just makes the process more transparent. If you do something good, it shows up. If you do something bad, it really shows up. Whereas when you're bulked, it's really hard to tell exactly what is working or not working. Whereas when you're shredded, I mean, if you're retaining water, you can see it. You can see it even in a number of hours. Yes, especially with diet. Like some of the best natural bodybuilders I spoke to told me that you can really figure out the precise amount of carbohydrates needed before you spill over. This is more true as you get closer to your show, but like every week you can test it. Like the refeed is not even to feel good. It's just to see what your tolerance is, right? And what I found for me is that 250 to 300 grams was that perfect sweet spot. If I went above it, I would start to look a, a little bit more watery the next week. So even 50 grams of carbohydrates can alter the way you look. It's that precise. So the diet, you know the exact amount of macros required. And the training, you know exactly how many sets, exactly what exercise you can tolerate, the exact frequency, nothing is more dialed in. Whereas when you're bulked, you can make a lot of mistakes. So that's how come you get so good at programming because your body is giving you very accurate feedback. My initial goal was to actually maintain it, which in hindsight was kind of naive. It seemed maybe plausible, you know, when you're dieting down and you're in a deficit and you're lean, you might think, oh, well, I could actually sustain this if I just added in a few hundred calories and I ate at maintenance, it would be easy. I think physiologically it would be, but psychologically, if you don't have a goal, if you're not pushing forward, it is actually very, very difficult to maintain. Yeah, that optimistic little kid inside you kind of wants to maintain it, but the problem is once you actually experience the horrors of being shredded, you don't want to feel like that and you will do whatever is necessary to get out of that condition. And in my case, I mean, you've heard about my binging experiences, but I gained a lot of weight in my first month. Like now I'm finally stabilized. My appetite is where it should be. But the moment I was done that comp, I was at a restaurant stuffing my face. Even when I got back, eating some more. Then the next day, another cheat meal. Boom, boom, boom. Like your belly is 
constantly out to here. But even if you try to do it right, like you're still gonna rebound. You know, you can't sustain that state for too long. You feel so shitty that even if it were possible to maintain that body fat, you're not gonna do it. It's just not worth it. For your social life, for your mental health, for your gains, uh, for content creation. If you can't make content, like what's the point of being shredded? If what you're gonna get for the rest of my channel is a Q and A once a week and just B-roll of me training, what the fuck is the point? I'm not helping anybody. I'm just being a self-centered body dysmorphia lunatic, you know? Yeah, the best you can hope is to be like right on the edge of shredded, but not directly on it. And even then it's not gonna be optimal for long-term progress. So that's the question. Like, do you wanna sacrifice your content or do you want to make gains and make actually helpful videos, but your viewer engagement is gonna go down because people can see that you're not as shredded, which is like crazy, but it's what it is. Like, what are you supposed to do? So hats off to people who can maintain a shredded physique year round. See, I don't give them hats off because I know that there's a very high chance they're drug users and I don't respect 99% of them. And if they happen to be super genetic freaks, well, that doesn't apply to any of us anyway, so <laughs> them. There are some natural guys who can maintain nine or 10% body fat year round. Usually they're not making great progress. Yeah, we talked about those guys before, but the common feature is that they're not making gains. They have plateaued for the last five years and then they're gonna claim, oh, I hit my natural limit at 25. No, you didn't. It is maintainable for some people, just not for me. A very small percentage of people and even those, it's not an optimal state to be in. So I'm like you, Jeff, uh, that's not something I can sustain. And I used to be a skinny, lean guy growing up. Like I always had a six pack. Actually, I have never lost my six pack from when I was a child till being at my heaviest bear mode. I've always had abs. So you can say that my body fat set point is lower than most people, yet I still prefer to be bare mode. I still prefer to be fluffier and I cannot maintain a shredded state. And the same for you. You generally look quite lean. You also did distance running where there's a natural incentive to stay lean. Like guys like you and me who would on paper be good candidates, we're not able to sustain it. So like who is this small percentage of people that could do it? Like they must be so rare that they're not even worth mentioning. So for all of us, basically, it's a pipe dream, unless you're on PEDs. You know, I've rebounded about 10 pounds in the last two to three weeks. And um, that is with trying to maintain. 10 pounds in two to three weeks, yeah. That sounds about right. Actually, that's pretty good for you because from what I've seen, it tends to be even higher, like 20 pounds. I can tell you that after three days of just binging my life away, I was up 13 pounds. Obviously it was water weight, like duh. But still, like you're stuffing so much food down your throat that weight gain is inevitable. And now it's only been two months after the competition and I've uh, <laughs> put on way more than 20 pounds, I'll tell you that. And a lot of it is fat, absolutely. Like it doesn't stop, guys. And if you choose to stop, well, guess what? Your progress is now gonna be slower. So you've made a decision to not feel 100% or maximize your gains. And I think this is why Jeffrey wants to bulk again, as do I. I'm not gonna main gain or recomp from here I am going to bulk again. Right on, Jeff. This is exactly how both of us got to this point. The reason we had so many compliments and why we look so amazing is because we bulked. That's the secret, that's the truth. Let's put on another five pounds of muscle and show what's possible. And then whenever we decide to cut again, those compliments will return. And people are gonna say, wow, look at all the gains you made when, it was, when they chose not to watch us, when it was actually bulking time because I want to make those sweet ass gains. I think there is still a lot of room to grow. My physique is nowhere near complete and uh, I'm excited to make progress again. I feel you on that, progress above all, and you will experience a very quick rebound in strength and size. It's only gonna get better. Actually, within two months, you'll be where you left off before this brutal cut, and now you're back into making those sweet ass gains. And I know that we both have a lot more potential. In fact, I can totally see you reaching 19 inch arms. It's also worth noting that literally every single negative of that whole list that I talked about was from under 10% body fat or so. Yeah, same here. Most of the cut went really well and it was only those last two months where problems took place. The last 10 pounds of fat loss. So if you wanna get really lean, where you're still leaner than 90% of the population and you have great definition in your arms, abs, etc. Like you're not stage lean, but you're maybe silver era lean. Like that's totally sustainable. Single digit is where the problems come in. You know, for me, the moment I hit the 150s, every single time I start feeling like garbage. But the 160s, that's not a problem. I can be 160 flat, like on the bleeding edge. 
of getting close to single digit and I'm, I'm okay. So we're not trying to discourage you from being healthy and defined. We're like, we don't have to all be bear mode or giga bulk, but it's the opposite extreme of having no body fat on you where proms are essentially unavoidable. So it's definitely the right thing to do to discourage being shredded. It's just that last little bit. That's where the body fights back. That's where the body shuts down. That's where things don't go very well. And if you're just cutting to potentiate a bulk, go until you start noticing those signs and symptoms and then go back into a gaining phase. I agree and you'll actually regain less fat than if you try to get shredded and then bulk back up because there's the rebound. So if I were to just cut to 160 and then lean bulk from there, I'd weigh less than I am now and I'd be even stronger. So that's how you properly potentiate a bulk. You stop a little bit before the negative side effects come into play. And will I do this again? Well, I'm not gonna say no, maybe in another five or six years when I forget how difficult it was, but not every year. This is not something you can really do every year as a natural lifter in my opinion, just because it takes four to six months for most people to get in that kind of condition. And then you also have to recover from it, which takes another month or two perhaps. And so you lose most of the year of making gains. And that's why most natural bodybuilders seem to compete once every three to four to five years. I will be bulking and cutting, but not this lean. Yeah, that's exactly why most natural bodybuilders don't do show after show. You need time to build size. And it can be years in many cases when you've been doing this for long enough. I would suspect that you wanna put on at least another five pounds of muscle before you shred down again. So however long that requires, which you're gonna to have to do some bulks, you know, that's when you should then reconsider revealing your newfound gains. But if you just get shredded again, you're gonna look basically the same. Why rush the process, especially when we know that we're capable of a lot more muscle gains? Now that this saga is finished, the next one begins and I'll be putting out content more frequently. Thank you so much for the support, especially those who have gotten my books and I will see you in the next video. Well, thank you, Jeffrey, for documenting your experience. It was very inspirational. You really brought a hell of a package and I'm glad that you're feeling better. I'm glad that you're making some gains again and I look forward to seeing your amazing content because you're a true gem to the natural fitness scene and we all want the best for you. So thank you for always keeping it real. Thank you for just being you because you spoke about a lot of stuff that many don't have the courage to disclose. So that's it. This is my lengthy response video to uh, Jeffrey's six month shredding experience. Very similar to mine. And I just hope that it put into perspective what really happens when someone gets to single digit. So now I wanna know from you guys, what do you think of our experiences? Did you ever get shredded? Did you experience similar stuff? What do you think about the look? What do you think about the things that we talked about? Like throw everything at me. And with that said, if you want more responses like this, let me know. And I'll talk to you all in the next video.